On the left side of this equation, the S tensor coefficient includes a J omega term. Also, HY is also a function of time. So this means we end up with a convolution of the inverse Fourier transform of so it's the inverse Fourier transform of the 1 over S E Z X P M L and the convolution of that with D H Y D X. And on the right side, the J omega term turns back into a partial der time derivative. So epsilon D E Z D T. Now we need to use Fourier transform theory to determine the inverse Fourier transform of 1 over s. I'm going to skip over the details of this because it's not critical to our understanding of how the PML is formulated. Ultimately, for this first term of the convolution, we're going to get delta, or Dirac delta function, minus sigma EZX PML over epsilon naught, and that times e to the minus sigma e z x pml over epsilon naught times t, and all that times the unit step function. For convenience, let's call the second term this equal to zeta, and I'm going to keep the same subscript and superscript here as for, and that's a function of time, as for the sigma. So now for Ampere's law, what we started off with was this. Before we started manipulating it and introducing s and zeta, now we have the Dirac delta function plus zeta, and we need that take the convolution of that with dhy dx. So this is the new form of the z component of Ampere's law. Since the convolution of the delta function with dhy dx is just dhy dx, then we get dhy dx plus zeta ezx pml convolution with dhy dx is epsilon de z dt. So then as a last major step that we need to complete in order to come up with an update equation for e z is that we need to evaluate this convolution. For two general functions f and g we know the convolution of f, they're both a function of time, is integration from minus infinity to infinity of f of t times g of t minus tau d tau. So in our case, f is zeta and g is dhy dx. We know that zeta and dhy dx will be zero before time stepping begins, so for negative values of tau. So this means we can truncate this integral to extend from zero to t seconds, the time span of our simulation. Plugging in zeta and dhy dx into the expression for the convolution, we get what's written here. And I wrote it from 0 to t seconds, the integral. Then since our FDTD model is discretized in time, we need to write this expression in terms of time steps rather than as a continuous time integral. We can do this using what's called a piecewise constant approximation, where we assume that zeta and dhy dx are constant over each time step. Using this approximation, which is basically like a staircase approximation, we can write that this is going to be approximately equal to the summation. I'm going to introduce m as our summation integral from 0 to n minus 1. So we're basically over all time steps that we're starting from 0, we're starting to count from 0, so that's why it's to my n minus 1. Zeta e z x pml, this is zeta, m, 
and dhy dx n minus m. We already know how to approximate dhy dx in discrete space and time using central differencing, but we need to figure out how to write the discrete impulse response, zeta, to use for a zeta of m in the summation. That is, as we're summing from m equals 0 to n minus 1, we need to know the value of zeta m over each segment. We can obtain this value by integrating over each time interval. So zeta ezx pml is going to be the integration of m delta t to one time step later. This is going to be our approximation of the discrete impulse response of zeta. We integrate zeta over one time step, each of the time steps. Plugging in the expression that we had earlier for zeta with respect to continuous time, that was on slide 10. We get this expression that's written on the top part of the screen. If we were to evaluate this, we would get e to the minus sigma e z x pml over epsilon naught times delta t minus 1, and then e to the minus sigma e z x pml over epsilon naught times m delta t. To make things easier, let's set the term in the bracket equal to a coefficient. So we're going to set this equal to c e x is going to be equal to that. Where the e subscript indicates that this coefficient is for an electric field update, we're going to be using it for the ez update, and the x subscript indicates that it's for a PML in the x direction. Now if we plug this into the expression we have for the convolution, which is written here on the bottom of the slide, so this is our convolution, which is what we set out to um, evaluate. So we can plug this in right here. Then we will get the summation m0 to n minus 1 and c e x. And we still have this, so e to the minus sigma e z x pml over epsilon naught, m delta t, and then we have this as well, dhy dx n minus m. During time stepping, we have to evaluate this expression every single time step and at every single grid cell within the PML, which means we have to store all the previous values of this expression since we have a summation, all the previous values of this expression at every time step and at all the grid cells in the PML. But this is very computationally intensive. Can we instead find a more efficient way to implement, it, implement this ex expression? For example, do we really need to reevaluate this entire expression every single time step?